if the margin is too close, it's going to require a judicial recount that is presided over by a judge. For more on this, I want to bring in political consultant Michael Jones, and he is coming to us from Victoria, BC. Good to see you, Michael. Thanks for having me. Okay, so this is a razor thin situation here. You're not expecting to see any sort of drastic change in the numbers, are you? No, in fact, I'm not even sure we're going to see any change in mm -hmm. numbers from election night results. So how crucial then is this recount for the Liberals? We're talking about a potential minority government, which I recall hasn't been seen in, in that province in, in, what, four decades? Yeah, 65 years, actually. Oh, the 65 last years. <laughs> 1952. Okay, so if it is a minority government, what does that mean for the Liberals? What do they have to do to try to get, for example, legislation passed? Well, so what'll happen is, you, first of all, as the incumbent government, they've also, you know, won the most number of seats in the popular vote. The, the lieutenant governor has already called upon Christy Clark to form a new government. And so when we come out of this writ period, when, you know, Elections Canada has officially tabled their results, assuming the numbers don't change, then, you know, they get to be government until such time as they fail to pass a confidence motion or a budget uh, in, in the legislature. So presumably they would get to be uh, government until, you know, this fall or possibly the springtime. Now, if they're going to pass a budget, if they're going to survive a confidence motion, then they're going to need support uh, of all, th uh, well, they're going to need the support of the Green uh, Caucus, which consists of three MLAs to get them over the top. And right now, Andrew Weaver has laid down some, you know, fairly significant uh, demands in terms of what he's looking for, whether he was to do a deal with the NDP or the Liberals. Yeah, they're kind of the, the kingmaker, if you will, in this situation. So w what type of demands uh, are they asking for? Well, one of the things is you need four seats, uh, just as Liberals were one seat shy of a majority government, mm -hmm. the Greens were one she seat shy of, uh, of getting official party status. You need to have four MLAs to have uh, be recognized as a party caucus within the legislature. They're at three. They want recognition of that. Uh, Andrew Weaver has also talked about he would like to see the first bill coming forward from any government um, if they want the green support to be banning corporate and union donations, something we already have at the federal level um, and in BC, which was taken to task by you know other media, including US media, uh, about that situation. That's one of the demands he's making. So, it, it, and of course, there's big differences between the Liberals and the Greens over, you know, Kinder Morgan Pipeline, LNG, and the like. Uh, okay, so what do you see as, as the big issues for, for the Liberals going ahead, assuming they retain a minority government? Well, it, it, the, the biggest issue they're going to have is is getting to govern more than more than a handful of months. Uh, you know, we could <clears throat> we could potentially have an election as early uh, this fall, or we could see one. In the springtime, but if, especially in the absence of any kind of formal deal between the Liberals and the Greens, um, I don't see this government uh, lasting much longer than that. I know people have talked about coalition governments lasting, you know, maybe up to 18 months, but if we don't even have a coalition, then I think you can cut the number of months before we're into another election down to single digits. It's never a dull moment in BC politics, is it, Michael? <laughs> Thanks for uh, coming on and explaining a little bit more to us, political consultant Michael Gagan. Appreciate it. You're, you're welcome. Thank you.